So there are three main things that people always ask me when talking about my M1 iPad Pro. And those things are, what are my most used applications and what I use them for? What's on my iPad, both on a software side and on a physical hardware side? And then lastly, how do I get my icons to look the way that they look on my iPad Pro because they do look a little bit different. So in this video, we're gonna answer all those questions. Let's get right into it. So let's start with the easy stuff, which are what are the physical products that are always on my iPad Pro no matter what. So the first thing is obviously my paper-like screen protector. Always recommend protecting the screen of the iPad, whether it's an iPad 9th gen or the latest and greatest fully loaded M1 iPad Pro, because at the end of the day, with these devices, the main way you use them is on the screen. So making sure that your screen is protected is absolutely the most important thing, especially when it comes to resell value or trading it in to third parties or directly to Apple. So again, I always have my paper-like screen protector, but there's also tempered glass ones. There are regular screen protectors. So I'll link a couple down below, including the paper-like one, which obviously I'm a little bit biased towards, but I absolutely love and always, always recommend it. And then normally, even though I don't really use it too, too often, my Apple Pencil is usually always sitting on there, whether it's the Apple Pencil 2 or some of those Apple Pencil alternatives, which you've done videos in the past about. So I do tend to gravitate towards the regular Apple Pencil 2, but that's just because I already have it. If I didn't have this one, then for my purposes, which are pretty much just note-taking and some very, very, very light brainstorm design work, I would just pick up one of those 30 to $40 styluses that you see on Amazon because they get you 99.9% .9 of the way there and you guys would know that if you follow the channel and watch the most recent videos. And then lastly has to be the Magic Keyboard. That is probably the best accessory ever created for a product. Yes, it's also probably the most expensive accessory that you can buy for a actual product, but overall it just changes the way that you use the iPad. It changes the form factor, changes what type of product it is in my opinion, because it goes from a tablet to a quasi laptop when you do a Tansom Magic Keyboard. And there aren't too many accessories that can do that to a tech product. Like without that keyboard accessory, this is just a tablet. It's a very high powered tablet, which you probably can't get too much real productivity work done because there's only you know one or two fingers that you can use at the same time and not type away a bunch of stuff. So with the Magic Keyboard, it really adds that laptop s feel, but still keeps it in the iPad world by being super unique with that cool design, making it still a touch first interface and using the trackpad and the keyboard as gesture based controls for the iPad Pro. So now let's talk about what is on my iPad Pro. So we're gonna pull up the screen right here and let's talk about exactly what we got going on here. And we're just gonna go from the dock over to the main screen and then over to the side screen that I have over here and we're gonna talk about my most used applications. So first off, let's start with the dock itself. So first, so you can see that my dock icons actually look a little bit different. I have them in this cool black colorway, which I absolutely love and I've kept around for a very, very long time. I'll link this icon pack down in the description below if you guys do wanna check it out. I know it comes in this black color and it also includes like orange, blue, like white, gray, you know, two-tone black, things like that. So there is a nice little variety when it comes to these icon packs. And basically what's happening is you're running a shortcut. So it's not a perfect ideal situation right now. So for instance, if I click on the settings one, you can see that when you click on one of these, there is a little drop down checkbox that lets you know like, hey, you actually use a shortcut. So that's basically what's happening. You're using a shortcut with this cool little icon right here that's actually mapped to the main application. So you're not going into a new application, you're still going into the same one. There's just that little added step where if you click on one of these icons, there is a drop down that says, hey, you're using a shortcut to open it. And it doesn't really get in the way. And I'm just hoping that with iPadOS 16, they just do away with that. And it becomes a little bit more of a fluid experience experience. But that is basically what I have down here and I only do it for these down here because these are my main applications and the ones that I always keep down here. But from left to right, let's start. So the first one is just iMessage. Very, very classic. You guys know exactly what iMessage is. So no need to really explain it, but you guys know that it's on my dock. And then next to that, we have Safari. So Safari has actually gotten a nice little bit of upgrades. So you can see with the Safari application, you can actually change your backgrounds now. So if I go to edit down here in the main kind of like hub, you can change the backgrounds to whatever you want. You can add whichever one you would like to do. So if I wanna add maybe one of my old backgrounds or one of my old thumbnails or click on one of these, you can change the background of this like Safari hub section or the homepage section of Safari. And you can also add to your favorites. There's things that are shared with you. So if somebody shares some links with you via iMessage or some other iOS application, they'll pop up right here. You get a nice little privacy report you can click on because Apple is really pushing privacy on the Safari side now. So trackers prevented from profiling you 71. Websites that contact the trackers 91%. So you get to see exactly you know what your overall search history is, what applications or what websites are getting your information and what Apple's blocked. So I love having that on there. And then another big one is actually inside of the status bar right here. If you click on this little puzzle piece, these are actually your Safari shortcuts, which is awesome to see. And I have one main one, which is PIPifier, which allows you to use picture in picture inside of Safari, but sometimes it also works with other applications. So PIPifier is one that I do recommend to people from the Safari shortcut menu. So, and then to access that extensions menu, you just go down to your settings, 
go down to where it says Safari, go down to extensions, and then go to more extensions, and then you're brought to the App Store with only extensions. This is the only real way to get to this part of the App Store currently. So these are all the different extensions that have been out for iPadOS 15 since it did release. But overall, extensions still have a way to go. I'm just glad that they're on Safari finally. The next one we're gonna talk about is my Mail app. So this is my Mail app of choice. It is actually called Spike Mail. So Spike Mail, I've been using it for about a year and a half now at this point, and I absolutely love it. I actually came from Spark Mail, which also in its own right, I really enjoyed as well. The one thing that sold me with Spike Mail is the way you actually communicate with people via email. So the way it's done is all through kind of like a chat box situation. So if you click on one of these, you can see that everything looks like a chat box. So what I really like about Spike Mail is that conversational aspect of email and turning email into more of a informal conversation. So most of the time when you're dealing with email, it's a very formalized way of communicating with somebody. It's usually done on the business side, right? A lot of like professional jargon is used in email. So what Spike Mail did for me from a psychological standpoint is to be okay with moving away from that real formal way of communicating via email. And that is what Spike Mail has done for me because of that conversational aspect. They also have some other tools like shared sheets, kind of like a Google Doc situation. I use it on occasion, but for the most part, I just love two things about Spike Mail that really set it apart. It's the conversational aspect, and then also how it filters and divvies up your email types from emails that you would wanna answer back physically to newsletters and to pretty much all spam email that you don't really wanna look at. So you can see that this is my priority email, and then if you click on this other section, it's pretty much all the emails that you receive that don't require either an immediate action or an action at all from you, right? Mostly newsletters or update emails or like tracking information and things like that versus all of your actual conversations with people are in the priority side. And I'm gonna link down in the description all the different applications that I can, that I can show you, that I use especially from a third party, like Spike Mail and not the regular iOS apps. But Spike Mail, I highly, highly recommend it. If you guys do wanna try it out, it's absolutely free. And then the next three applications down here are actually the camera, the photos, and the notes application. Pretty self-explanatory, all iOS applications. I actually use iOS notes a ton. If you guys can see, I have like 7 million notes or something like that. So I have 1,300 notes. Leave a comment down below how many notes you guys have in your native Apple Notes application. Very curious to see what that's like, but you guys know that Notes, it syncs across all your devices. It's just very easy to use. It's hard to complain about it. Does it lack some features? Absolutely, it lacks some features. But for me, which is just quick note taking, some video ideas, some stuff with work that I need to write down real quick, this is great because it syncs across all of my devices, whether it is the iPad, the iPhone, or my Mac computer. So this next one is actually called Affinity Photo. So Affinity Photo is what I've been using for the better part of the last 200 videos now. Because I think we've made 200 thumbnails, but it's just how I make my thumbnails now. Because I'm allowed to, it's kind of like the Photoshop of iPad, because Photoshop for iPad still isn't perfect yet. And I'm not somebody who's ever used Photoshop, but I've had to slowly teach myself how to use Affinity Photo. And I really like it. You know, it works with layers. You can use PNGs, you can lay stuff over stuff. You can create PNGs out of images if you want to, you know, make transparent PNGs. So overall, I just like the function. I like how it works. It's very intuitive with being able to zoom in and still using your Apple Pencil. Like, it's kind of crazy how you can use, I use both hands on this canvas with Affinity Photo because that's the way it's supposed to be used. And it's really like a, like a digital piece of paper that Affinity Photo turns your iPad into. So this paired with that paper-like screen protector, absolutely pristine, but this should be the thumbnail that you guys clicked on to watch this video. Hopefully you guys did like it, but you can see that in this thumbnail alone, you have the main image, you have one white background on the top, you have the one overlay, the other half overlay, you have the title, and then the two arrows. So those are a bunch of things going on for one thumbnail image, but Affinity Photo allows you to really kind of play with it and use it in an efficient way. The next application I have down here is the file system. Pretty self-explanatory, you know, Apple just needs to do a better job of making it easier to use. There's nothing that I can really pinpoint about the files application, which I don't like. I mean, maybe that progress bar when you're transferring files should be a little bit more visible. They did add it finally with iPadOS 15, but it's more of like a little circle that shows up and you have to click on it to see exactly how long those files are taken to transfer. There's nothing that I can really say about the files app to make better. They just have to make it more like Finder, in my opinion, because it's still a little hard to navigate. I just can't really get used to it, but that's the files application. Then we have LumaFusion. So LumaFusion is my video editor of choice. Every video that you've seen on this channel was edited in LumaFusion, either on this iPad Pro or the iPad Air most recently or 2018 iPad Pro. This is what I use to edit every single one of my videos. It deals with layers perfectly. I think you can have up to six video files running at once and up to six audio files running down below. So for me personally, I never have more than three or four angles at most in my videos. So this is perfect. The moment you start dealing with like eight, 10, 12, 15, 30 different camera angles, then you should probably get something like Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve or you know the Premiere Suite or whatever that is, but LumaFusion for 40 bucks, it's a one-time purchase and consistently gets updated with new features, hard to beat at all. So that is LumaFusion and it works on iPhone and iPad. So if you need something to edit on the go on your phone, 
LumaFusion is even great on the phone, which is crazy to think about. And then the last few apps, these are just the apps that I use on a daily basis. So we have Twitter down here, which if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, by all means do that. I mean, talk a lot of tech stuff on the Twitter feed. Then we have YouTube TV, YouTube, Spotify, App Store, and the settings. Now leave a comment down below. Are you guys team Spotify or team Apple Music? I've been with Spotify since it pretty much came out. I, I want to say in like 2012, 2011, maybe even earlier than that. So I've been with Spotify for such a long time that I just don't really want to go to Apple Music. Haven't done made that plunge and I don't think I'm ever going to. Spotify just knows me way too well, so we're sticking with them. So now let's talk about the widgets that I have up here. So on my home screen, I like to keep it very, very clean. As you guys can see, I only have my dock and no actual applications on the home screen. Now I do wish, I wish that Apple kept the Today View where you can pin the Today View because I loved having the Today View on the left hand side. Like I can't grab this and stack it underneath. It's very annoying that you can't do that. So in iPadOS 16, I'm hoping Apple does bring it back the same way they brought back the ports and all the MacBook Pros this year and touted it. I mean, let them tout it like a new feature again. I don't really care as long as they bring it back. But you can see on here with my widgets, it's very simple. I have my sub widget, which literally just counts down in intervals of 100, how many subs we have. So 40,300, you guys are awesome. And then it is, it is a smart stack, so I do kind of move it. And this is also my weather widget. And then I have my Coinbase widget, which just gives me like a little rundown of what's going on from a cryptocurrency perspective. And then I have my spike mail widget, which gives you like the last three priority emails that you've sent or received. And that is all I have on my home screen. So it's basically my most used applications, all for productivity, very YouTube focused in my opinion. And then the widgets, which are just information that I'd like to see at a glance. And now if we go to the second screen, this is where it gets a little crazy. This is where it gets a little bit more intense. So here we have an abundance of widgets and then I also have some more applications that I use on a daily basis, which I don't, which I like to keep away from my home screen just because I like a decluttered home screen. So whenever I open it up, I'm not just like bombed with a bunch of widgets and applications and then I get a little flustered. So again, we'll start from the top left. Here is just to find my application, the find my widget, which is literally just tracking my dog with an air tag. So I know a lot of people say don't use an air tag for dogs. I just use it on there. You know, I figure if my dog does get lost, somebody with an iPhone will see him and be able to tell me where he is. I haven't had to use it, thank goodness, but for now, at least I know. So for now, at least I know like where he is at all times because he does have that follow paw collar and it's been on him for forever and has a perfect little slot for an AirTag. So that is the widget that I have up there. We also have the new Apple Card credit card widget. Now this is again done through the wallet and it only works for the Apple Card. So if you don't have the Apple Card, you will not get this wallet widget because you, the wallet isn't really integrated with the iPad, at least not the way at least not the same way that it is on the iPhone, but if you do have an Apple card, you now have the widget right there, which is great to see, and it's editable. So if you long press, edit the widget, you can actually do kind of like a monthly breakdown of how you spend your money with little graphs and things like that. And then right underneath it is my Telegram widget. It just has my top two conversations. So shout out Patrick Rambles. He's the man, if you guys haven't checked him out, please do. Does some awesome content on YouTube. And then I'm in a group chat with a bunch of other tech YouTubers, which is great to see. And if we keep going underneath the Telegram widget, we actually have just the news top stories. I like to see the daily stories from Apple News. So that is what we have, just a simple news widget so I can click on one of them, see exactly what's going on, and read whatever I need to read. And then this big one right here is a new Files XL widget. So this lets you actually interact with it. So if I click on one of these, it actually takes me directly into that file from the Files app. Or if I click on this one, it'll go directly there. So I do like that. This is kind of like the one and only widget which I would consider slightly interactive because if you click on one of them, then it does take you there. So if I click on my AX Pencil, this is another thumbnail that we did for a previous video before, but easily accessible from this XL Files widget. And that's pretty much all I have from a widget perspective. So we have my top three here, and then these other ones, which are just more information that I like to have at a glance, but also some for productivity purposes. And then underneath is my other, I guess, most used apps. Most of these apps I do use on a daily, if not weekly basis. So the first one is Sunsama. So if you guys haven't heard about Sunsama, it is kind of like a simplified calendar widget scrum board situation. So it's very similar to a Taskade or maybe like a lighter version of Notion. And what I like about it is that it lets you organize everything based on a calendar, right? So you can still kind of have that scrum board situation where you have maybe if you run a YouTube channel like myself, you have, you know, video ideas, videos in progress, videos being filmed, videos in editing, videos that are ready to upload and things like that. So it works very well, especially on the desktop feature. So if we go into Safari, type in Sunsama, then you can see that the actual dashboard on the desktop class site is really, really nice. So it works the same way as a scrub board, but it's all calendar based. So you can easily start a project and move it over to when it's due, you know, what progress bar you're, you're dealing with, like when it's supposed to happen. And some Sam's mission is to keep you organized, but also leave time for things that you like to do. So like it tells you to shut off at five o'clock or at six o'clock or whenever you want to shut off the actual system 
to make sure you're not overworking yourself and things like that. So Sunsama, highly, highly recommend it. I'm going to link it down in the description below if you guys do want to check it out. They have a two-week free trial, and I don't think you have to put your credit card in there, so that's great to see. And the last few down here are just YouTube Studio, which you guys know exactly what's going on with YouTube Studio. The next one is actually Shift Screen. I haven't spoken about Shift Screen in a little while, but if you guys do want to check it out, it is a great application. When it comes to finally being able to have some sort of floating windows or some sort of secondary monitor support, with your iPad Pro. Now it isn't absolutely perfect, but if you do want to turn your iPad more into like a Chromebook situation, or this is kind of like the closest thing you can do with Samsung Dex type experiences with the iPad Pro, because it gives you a full-fledged floating Windows experience. You can go into Safari or go into the internet browser. You can log into Google Docs, log into your Slack, and still have floating Windows and still use your iPad at the same time as long as this window's open, at least in a, like a multitasking view. So that shift screen, I, I really, really like it. If you guys want to check it out, it's worth at least playing with because it does let you use an entire screen without the black bars, which is what we want to get to when it comes to the iPad Pro. So this is my Authenticator app, very self-explanatory, just gives you your six digits whenever you want to double authenticate or 2FA with, with any of your accounts, or your websites, and things like that. So that's my Authenticator of choice. And then we have the Microsoft Suite. Let me know if you guys want another video on an updated Microsoft situation for both maybe the M1 MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, and then also the M1 iPad Pro, because these applications continue to get better, continue to be more computer-like instead of tablet-like, and it's honestly a very good way or a very strong productivity suite on the iPad Pro with iPad OS. So that is my Microsoft Office little folder. We have Excel, OneNote, Word, and then PowerPoint as well, which I love to use. And that is pretty much everything that I use on the iPad Pro. Now it's very simple, like I try to keep everything as efficient and concise as possible. I don't like having a lot of applications. I usually have two or three applications that I'm playing with and I'm testing out to see if it's worth maybe making a review and sharing with everybody. But for the most part, I kind of stay within Apple's ecosystem. Like I stick with Safari, I stick with Apple Notes, I do use the Microsoft suite of products on the productivity side, and then I have some more creative applications like Affinity Photo, like LumaFusion, things like that just to help me get my, my work done. And then also, like I said, Spike Mail is a great email client if you guys do want to try it out absolutely free. And I can't forget to mention also Sunsama. Sunsama has been absolutely wonderful, especially with the desktop class browsing experience on Safari, on the iPad Pro. It's such a great application. If you guys want to try it out, link down in the description below. Again, two week free trial and you don't have to put your credit card in. But that should answer everybody's questions of A, how I get my icons to look the way they do, what applications I use the most because I normally don't have applications that I don't use. Like if I do download an app and I don't use it within a day or two, I'm that rare situation where I get rid of it. Like I actually go back and delete that application. It's very rare that there's an application on my iPad especially that I leave on there with no reason whatsoever. That's more of an iPhone thing in my opinion. But those are the applications that I use on a daily basis and I mean on an, like literally a daily basis. And then again, those are the products that I always have in my iPad Pro. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin right here. And if you guys wanna check out some more videos on iPad OS, iPad Pros, iPad accessories, click on one of these videos right here. You'll probably find something that you didn't know before. But that's gonna do it. Until next time, peace.